other side of the mountaintop, rainbows in. I can see the road is bending. Wonder what's around the bend. We're a speedboat sort of a country, as you must have noticed. We like going fast in fiberglass. In our time, in such a country, who would have the patience to build a great square rigger out of sturdy oak? Well, to answer that, we have to leave the Sheboygan River on a sunny summer's day and take you to the birch trees and the corn cribs of lonely rural central Wisconsin on a day last winter. That's where we came across Ferd Nymphius, one of the last great craftsmen of one of the great historic crafts, building wooden boats capable of sailing the oceans of the world. Ferdinand Rudolf Carl Maria Nymphius cares not one bit about doing it quickly and efficiently. All he cares about is doing it right. Now this is a 47-foot Banks type schooner. The old timer with a double cabin. You got a step-up deck. The schooner's name is to be Christine Margaret. Ferd Nymphius has been building her for more than two years. Doing it right takes time. It's all the best of construction all the way through teak. You know, mahogany. You notice even the ceiling is the deck cabin tops are all mahogany. Instead of having plywood, it's just like a tongue and groove. These are all splined, all fastened. Ferd Nymphius built a rowboat 60 years ago. He is still proud of that rowboat. He's been proud of every one of the 111 boats he has built since. The schooner Christine Margaret is the 112th. The frigate Red Lion, identical to a Dutch man-of-war of the same name, which sailed 300 years ago, is the 113th. Nobody taught Ferd Nymphius how to do this. He taught himself. The great joy in this enormous shed in the middle of Wisconsin is to watch him teach others. Go ahead, that's it. He kids them. You're right on the line, too. Accidents will happen. <laughs> he praises them. You did a great job, I am going to say. He helps and them. That's so then there's only a, a 30 seconds difference in four pindles. And that's Joshua Lee worked in television in Chicago. He decided building wooden boats would be a more honorable occupation. And of course, he's right about that. Mike Allured was a math major at the University of Colorado looking for a calling. Out here in yeah. Ferd Nymphius's cold That's barn, right. he found it. Earl Johnson was a fur salesman in the city. He used to make a lot more money selling furs, but he'll never go back to it. Ferd Nymphius's own son, Alex, can already build a wooden boat as well as any man alive, with one possible exception. That's why I try to teach my young fellas. The thing, first thing you do is do the thing right. Now, I don't care just how much time you take, as long as you're trying your best while you're doing it. It's, uh, sometimes it's hard to get that through the skull. To, they catch on. Like a boat yard will charge around 20 bucks an hour, and we charge half of that thing. And we do better work. I just as soon make less money and feel satisfied, and then the fellows feel better by far that way, too. There's a sign in Ferd Nymphius's cluttered office that says, Lonesome? Like to meet new people? Like a change? Like excitement? Like a new job? Just screw up one more time. Quality. That's what Ferd Nymphius teaches these young apprentices of his. Uh, that surprising part, they go along with it. Some of these, you know, you see them with their long hair and whiskers all over the place. And by gosh, they, they go uh, with that quality. I, I, I'm sometimes a little astonished. Mr. Corralti, I, I, uh, you, you kind of get the impression the first time you see him, and Jesus, you look like you haven't washed for a while even, you know, and, and uh, you expect the work to be the same way. 
But no, I can depend on it. I get those guys going, and by God, they'll do a good job. And they'll be honest. So here are all these long-haired young men from all over the country who have become a kind of family to the old man who never settles for anything but their best. Really, that's why they're here. He has seven children of his own. One of them, Barbie, the art major, is carving the figurehead that the frigate Red Lion will carry under her massive bowsprit. You can't watch the patient craftsmanship that goes on here for very long without thinking this is the best of worlds. This must be the fulfillment of Ferd Nymphius's earliest dream. No, his earliest dream when he was young and single was to sail away to Tahiti. I built a 36-foot canoe stern catch designed by Beck Rager, 10-foot 6-beam. I was going to sail around the world. She was built out of an uh, inch and a quarter mahogany, Honduras mahogany over ribs that were an 8-inch center. She was built like a brick privy. But you never sailed it around the world. No, that's too bad. I, I, uh, my wife torpedoed me. I, uh, that's when I met my wife and you know, I got seven kids and no boat, but... <laughs> that boat has another owner now. The boat is in Tahiti, but Ferdinand isn't aboard. So all this is the substitute dream. Building boats on a farm hundreds of miles from the nearest ocean. Boats for others to sail around the world. Building each one as if it were to be forever his own. And in a way, each one is forever. And I think, I really think it's worth it. It gives you a certain satisfaction to yourself. Sometimes I've uh, found the owners, oh, that's good, that's plenty good, you know, but uh, I didn't satisfy me. I still couldn't do it. I right after doing it. You've had owners willing to accept boats that you weren't yeah, satisfied Yeah, I didn't with. think it was right, no. That's right. So then what happens? Then as a rule, they, they see it my way. Oh, sure. In fact, I'll make a remark, what the hell, you only own the boat, I'm building it. The frigate Red Lion left Sheboygan on Lake Michigan the other day and ventured out to see the world, her proud owner at the helm. He's just the owner. He knows she's Ferd Nymphius's boat in every beam and plank and fastening. She sails like a dream. <laughs> 